How many times did the prophets of old or biblical writers say, thus says the Lord, inspired by the Holy Spirit? Personally, I truly believe that God still speaks today. He communicates with people in various ways, through the Holy Spirit, through His Word, and maybe you've experienced those moments when you open the Bible and a verse just jumps off the page and speaks to your heart. From a biblical perspective, God isn't limited to just one way of communicating with His people. In Job 38, 1, the Lord answered Job out of a whirlwind. In Exodus 19, 18, God revealed Himself to Moses in an extraordinary way. Mount Sinai was covered in smoke because the Lord descended on it in fire. The smoke went up like from a furnace, and the whole mountain trembled violently. In 1 Kings 19.12, Elijah encounters the Lord, and the Bible says, After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. I believe God's purpose in speaking in a gentle whisper was to show Elijah that God's work doesn't always have to be accompanied by dramatic revelations or grand manifestations. God can speak in a gentle, peaceful, yet firm manner. Another way God speaks is by impressing upon our spirits. In Acts 17, 16, while Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was deeply troubled by the city's idolatry. Also, in Acts 18, 5, when Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, Paul was compelled by the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus is the Messiah. In both instances, God, or the Holy Spirit, impressed Paul, compelling and urging him into action. To put it in context, we need to understand Romans 8.16, which says, The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. This gives us a glimpse into some of the ways God speaks. Remember, the Lord isn't restricted in how He communicates. In summary, I believe God most clearly and commonly speaks to us today through His Word. The more we learn, the better we will recognize His voice when He speaks. With this understanding, the Holy Spirit is crucial for any of us to hear clearly the Lord's voice and discern it. I encourage you to make this your prayer request that you might hear the Lord's voice more clearly from this day forward. Dear Lord, along with everyone listening, we are here believing and patiently waiting, expectantly looking to hear your voice. Speak to us, Lord Jesus. Speak to our hearts. Lord, speak through your word and give us direction, encouragement, and clarity, removing every cloud of confusion from our lives. Lord, speak to us collectively as believers, but also speak to us individually, Almighty God. Father, give us a word for our families, your verse. In John 10, 27, 28 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. We want to hear your voice, Lord Jesus, because in your voice, there is life-giving power. In your voice, Lord, I find peace, I find joy. And so I pray that our ears be open to hear the voice of Jesus Christ, a voice that calls us to repentance and to carry our cross. I pray, King Jesus, that I may be someone who seeks and searches for your voice when needing guidance and direction. Luke 12, 12 says, For the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say. So I pray that the Holy Spirit be the loudest voice in our lives. I ask that the Holy Spirit be the voice that convicts us to repentance, a voice that leads us to the Word of God, a voice that reminds us of how much we need Jesus Christ in our daily lives. Speak to us in our hearts, God. Speak to us about your will and plan for our lives. 
I ask God that you drown out the voice of the enemy who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Drown out the voice of the father of lies, and instead let the Holy Spirit be the voice that advises us, that teaches us, that convicts us of our sins. May he be the voice that guides us. Speak to us in our hearts, God. Speak to us about your will and plan for our lives. I ask God that you drown out the voice of the enemy who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Drown out the voice of the father of lies and instead let the Holy Spirit be the voice that advises us, that teaches us, that convicts us of our sins. May he be the voice that guides us. You say in your word, Lord, that your sheep hear your voice and you know them and they follow you. Indeed, we are your sheep, Lord Jesus, and we follow the good shepherd. So Lord, we will hear and obey your voice because you make us lie down in green pastures. Only you, King Jesus, can lead us beside still waters. Your voice, Master, restores our souls. It guides us along paths of righteousness. Your verse in Matthew 7, 24 says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Father God, give us the grace not only to hear your word, but to practice it as well. Help us to set aside all our selfish ambitions to live out your word in our daily lives. Holy Spirit, change our hearts and challenge us to live according to the word of God. King Jesus, we bless your name. May you reign over our lives forever. Thank you for hearing our prayer, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I invite you to click on this video that's appearing on the screen now. You'll like it. God bless.